Welcome, Firesiders. I am your host, Coach Ray Z, and this is Athletic Definition, episode 109. Uh, this show is live, then simulcast at the same time, broadcast. Uh, if you're new to Fireside, welcome. I, some of you I know just listen through the stream, and some of you are watching on Twitch. If you've never heard of Fireside, it's this new app by uh, Mark Cuban and Fallon. Uh, and I will be having my one-year anniversary show this Saturday already. I know the app has not been out to the general public uh, for one year, but I got early access. And because of that, I will be celebrating my one year anniversary with, you know, a, there'll probably be over 110 shows by then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I'm doing a show tomorrow. So that'll be my hundredth and 11th show, which uh, we'll talk about more, but uh, very proud of that. It's my first year broadcasting. I've such a learning experience, such a growth experience. And when I first started here on Fireside, it, it was only audio. They added the video option and then the simulcast options, you know, on Facebook and all that took some getting used to. And now I'm still getting used to it. At, you know, I'm way more comfortable giving someone a workout or working out myself. So speaking of working out, that's why I decided to do this show today. It's called the uh, Perfect Push-Up versus Sliders. And if you, I'm sure you've heard of the Perfect Push-Up. It was a... Um, let me see here. It debuted back in 2003, and it was all over TV. It was all over infomercials. And then Sliders, uh, I, tr I tried to find the origin to that, but I, I couldn't find the origin. I'll have to do more digging. When, when I mean origin, I mean the, the year that they came out as far as workout equipment. But I, I wasn't able to find that. Uh, but if you've been watching me for a while, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I also do like a Merry Fitness series that I've been doing for the last two years. And it, it's live now here on Fireside. So I did it here and I, I gave different uh, workout uh, equipment ideas that you could give to family members that like working out or want to start working out. And so I, I did recommend actually both of these items in the past. I I have both items. So if, if you're watching on the simulcast or if you're watching on Facebook or on Fireside, once again, thank you. But this is the perfect push-up. Now there's all, all kinds of, you know, imitators now, uh, but this is pretty much it. And what, what what you do is you put them on the floor and always, it, it, as you know, uh, it's live, it's video on Fireside. But then after I distribute it as a podcast, so to all my podcast listeners, I appreciate you. And then also on Spotify and YouTube, you have the video version. So for those of you who watch the video version or actually want to see how the perfect push-up works, I will be working out today and I will record... Uh, how it looks in different angles that way you have an idea and you can make a decision if for some reason maybe you want some for yourself or if you you think they're worth it and i am going to give the pros and cons uh but may you know make sure to stick around because at the end i'm, I'm going to tell you the pros for, for both of them now uh these range are, I think that when they first came out, they were about $30, $40 and you can find them now let's see i did i did my uh online searching for them and uh i found them i found them online anywhere between 10 to 40 dollars and that's brand new or used so the basically and, and you also when you buy them there's different kinds you can buy some that are they're not maybe the company made different variations now but there's some called the elite which just be look a little bit like nicer they probably just turn easier i've never had those and then they have the the standard ones but those pretty much have been around for a long time they, they don't move the difference between these is they help you target different ranges when you're working out so with a rotation it's making you really not cheat it is a, an effective workout, a good workout. It's a good variation to throw it in um, because a lot of people just do the typical chest, bro. It's chest day, bro. We're going to do this typical, the typical workout. So I, I was watching, I always watch different like educational fitness stuff uh, just to learn different uh, ways that the top athletes are training. So I don't remember where I first came across it, but I, uh, I'll, I'll dig through my 
library and I'll see if I could find it. But I was watching how some Olympic guys train because they were talking about how they don't use unless they're on the weightlifting team, but they were talking about the gymnastic guys, how strong they are. So they were talking about their training. And I first came across sliders where if you're watching, if you're not watching, they're just like, think of like basically, uh, think of uh, uh, Frisbees. They're like Frisbees basically, but, but smaller. Now, also as well, when you, if you decide to buy some, uh, and frisbees are an alternative as well if you don't want to buy some and just kind of try them um but i from what i saw you could buy some that are double-sided which are the ones that i have or you could buy the ones that aren't double-sided the benefits to having the double-sided is uh if you have carpet uh it would go on this side if you're watching and then you could just slide on the carpet many many variations of workouts you can do uh, and then if you have wooden floor or something smooth, you would flip it on the other side and then you can do the workout uh, with it. I do have one, one of the questions that I saw asked on the Internet and I personally tried it. I didn't have any success, but uh, there are some alternatives. But uh, one of the options is or one of the questions asked is do they work like on mats? you know, like those workout mats, or I use them. I have a couple for jujitsu. So kind of like jujitsu mats or, uh, you know, I didn't have any luck, but it, an alternative you could try to use is towels, but I'd rather just try it on a whole different surface unless you don't have any other option, but really you, you could use Frisbees to kind of start off or old plastic plates that you don't want or plan to use again. Cause well, I mean, I guess if that's your thing uh, and maybe you have a foot fetish, but that's a whole different show. This this show here is about fitness. So I looked on, I looked on, I happened to buy these at Ross. Well, I was, after I seen it, I just, it was like meant to be after I seen the video about the gymnastic guy. And I'm talking years ago, I walked into Ross and, and I saw him and I bought him and I don't remember how much I paid, but I checked online as well today. And I saw them, they range from like seven to $12. So very inexpensive and you can do pushups, but not, not the traditional pushups. So uh, the other thing that I think is great is just also the, the, the variety of different types of workouts you can do and this can help like strengthen and lengthen which i'm a, a big uh advocate of lengthening from all of us who sit down or have live cubicle lives where i was like crunched over or or you know typing away or our necks always down too with our cell phones now uh people start neat need to start doing corrective exercises. I could see us maybe, and by the way, I'm not no scientist or human biologist, like master degree, but I could see maybe us evolving eventually so long because our necks are always pointing down. And for us to, you know, after years and years of always with our neck down, unless they come up with something, which it, like, it looks like it'll be the Google lenses and all those glasses, but that's a different topic too. As far as working out, I mentioned if you watch it on YouTube or Spotify, I'll, I'm going to work out today. So I'll, I'll use these and I'll show you some of the different ones. You could type of workouts as you're watching the podcast that you can do with these. Um, and I'm actually kind of think, thinking of uh, making some and selling them if you'd be interested in uh, maybe a great way to show support. Because as you guys know, I'm not, I'm not trying to pitch anything or sell anything that I don't use myself and I wouldn't like i wouldn't want to sell anything to anybody that i would feel bad for i've worked all kinds of jobs and i've worked at major gyms and selling you know like this person can't afford it at, at the time and they're like pushing gym memberships and i don't want to do it but hey i need to make a living you know i got kids to feed just like everybody else is trying to survive but the gym business is basically at least the major gym businesses they're all about hey let's get you signed up Let's get you signed up and hopefully they won't show up so we can save on the water for the showers and everything else. Um, these ones happen to be from Belly Toll Fitness, which is one of the gyms that I worked for. I, I, I was like the manager there, the morning manager. Uh, overall, they, they taught me how to be a shark there, like how to sell. They were like, they straight teach you how to be a closer. It, it's a very interesting like i don't know if anybody's seen the episode of friends where 
someone signs up for the gym and then uh i don't really watch that show but i happened to see someone mentioned it to me so i saw a little clip of it and and i couldn't tell you any of the characters names on friends but Oh, I think Ross. Yeah, Ross goes with somebody to back him up and be like, we're going to get you out of this gym membership. And he ends up going there and talking to the gym guy and the gym guy ends up signing him up too. And he becomes part of the, you know, the, the gym. And as I mentioned, all they would do, uh, and not just them, because they're not the only gym I work for. Uh, you know, I, I worked for Alley Fitness, which is a nationwide gym as well. I worked for UFC, and then I worked for Little MMA Gym. They were all great experiences, and they also had their drawbacks. I, I wish that, you know, g- big national gyms really cared about their clients, but it's also difficult to try to keep track of so many people because their goal is just to sign up, sign up, sign up. Uh, I, I always thought that a lot of the the guys and ladies in the fitness industry were not fit um, but some of them would be the best salesmen or or sales ladies so i i could see why they were working there as well and you know this is just a little extra from the things that i've learned but if you decide you do want to get either the perfect push-up or the sliders i'm gonna go hands down because of versatility size cost if you're gonna like go on vacation i would take these because if the hotel has that carpet you're definitely going to be able to work out with these you could do uh bear crawls if if you have like they're low impact too so if you have like bad joints that bother you and the variations of push-ups it's kind of hard to do like the i mean you don't really need these to just go up and down but you can go up uh or to the side both at the same time and uh it's really difficult you know once you build up strength but you're working different ranges which is what you want to do and which is you know the main goal of this show it it really doesn't matter which one you select see the perfect push-up is meant for you to work a different range which is what i'm encouraging work all ranges work four ranges most people don't work all ranges i know people that just go to the gym and work chest chest bro chest bro let's hit chest what do you want to work out today chest bro that's not going to be healthy in the long run it's probably make you even unproportionate where you could hurt yourself so i would recommend variety and different ranges uh extreme range uh Well, some of these terms that I'm saying as far as the ranges, you guys may not understand because they're ATG uh, terms, which is like uh, ATG is one of the coaching programs that I study is uh, uh, the knees over toes, Ben Patrick. And so he talks about different ranges because uh, that's where I, 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 you know, besides the kettlebell certification, U.S. track and field, none of those really address people with injuries so i really wanted to learn how to help people who were injured because most people that wanted to train with me had already some sort of prior existing injury and so i had to uh and also for for my personal self and my personal development as an athlete i felt that i was going backwards in certain sports like marathoning i was getting slower and as expected you know 57 marathons completed uh up to up to now and doing jujitsu and doing basketball tournaments and not training in any specific sport like see like most people who do jujitsu that's all they do or they play basketball that's all they do so trying to just trying to stay well balanced uh, but and compete uh isn't it, it wasn't easy but but it was sure fun but at the same time uh, with all the marathoning, it was taking a toll. So I, w- I had to learn how to make those little body body aches in the parts of, you know, my body that I didn't realize what they were, but they were hurting. Like when I would run at the end of the marathon, it would always be like the lower part of my calf, and it would always be like the Achilles. Um, but I didn't really know how to strengthen those before. And then from training with the, you know, the knees over toes, all those guys, a lot of great coaches around the world. I've had some of them as guests and, and keep planning to have them on. I keep inviting Ben Patrick. I would love to have him. He, he's just a wealth of knowledge. And, you know, I, 
I, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm older than Ben Patrick. So, uh, I've had Steve Maxwell. If anyone uh, knows who that guy is, he's, I think he just turned 69. He's like one of the first black belts in Jiu Jitsu. He's the first kettlebell coach in the United States. So he's a wealth of knowledge. And one of the things he, he's known <laughs> to say is that he doesn't trust really young guys as coaches. Like, what do they know? It's like, uh, are you going to be mobile as you get older? You know, do you want to take advice from someone who's going to have hip surgery or back surgery? Because, you know, it, to me, it's all about longevity. I want to be able to do this for as long as I can. I'm trying to reach 100 marathons after I reach 100 marathons. I'm trying to run a marathon in each state. So that'll be 50 states. Who knows how many years that'll take. I'm trying to be a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. And it normally takes about 14 years to become a black belt. You could literally become a doctor before you become a black belt. It, the percentage of people that become black belts is... I think it's 1%. It's so small. So I got some long-term goals where if I want to be able to keep going and doing this, and I have a son that I play basketball with, uh, we're going to be playing this Saturday, and then I play against his friends. And if I want to be able to keep doing all this, I needed to get stronger in all ranges, not just in what, what I've always been doing, you know, that old saying, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. So I always tell, you know, people like, if you're always just say, for example, doing squats, you're doing squats, you're getting both legs stronger, but let's say your left knee hurts or your right knee or your, some part of your leg hurts, you're not getting one leg is most likely, I'm going to say like 90% stronger than the other so you have to try and balance your body out as much as you can so by doing a uh, atg split squats which you're doing basically single leg squats or one at a time you, you'll fi figure out which leg is stronger than the other and then you can work on that one a little bit more and balance it out a little bit help avoid all these injuries so you know these are kind of things i, I talk about so overall as i mentioned it doesn't matter which one you go for. I personally, uh, my friend gave me the perfect push-up, so it was perfect. I wanted to try them. I do use them. And then the sliders I bought myself after seeing how the gymnasts use them to train. And then I found out after getting them, you know, you go to YouTube where I do, and I'm like, hey, what, what else could I do with these? Or how do I train with them? Then I saw the versatility. I kind of already in my mind Im imagined uh, using them as a bear, like for bear crawls. But then uh, on YouTube, it's like endless. Like I just finished watching a video where like he did 24 variations of this. So I'll, I'll show some along on YouTube and Spotify if, if you watch it on that. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. My whole thing is hopefully you, you think about working out all ranges and not just the same, same old like way of working out do the opposite of what we do. And I'll give you a couple examples since we're always doing chest. I like to do the bands the opposite way because from always doing chest and then as I mentioned, sitting down, as we get older, we start to round and hunch. That'll help you kind of get that, that uh, I can't even think of the word right now, that range you want in your back. And then the other thing that I always recommend, and I, I personally do before a workout, and if you can, uh, well, you, you can do it as much as you want, but I, I walk backwards. And then if your knees don't hurt or you're okay with that and you have a good balance, I do some sprinting backwards. And I do I do five minutes, and you, you could break it up, but I do five minutes straight. And then the second minutes, I add weight. So I do, I pull, I pull a sled and, uh, to me the opposite, cause if you think about it, how many times are you going forwards or I'm running, I've ran 57 marathons. So that's, I forget how many miles it's like from, I'm, I'm in, um, uh, Azusa, California, which is San Gabriel Valley. So I ran like from here to like past Dallas, Texas. I, I, I did it on the map. So I ran 
a lot of miles. And that's just me always going forward the same direction, the same direction. My body's not getting balanced. So I, I want to do the opposite. Uh, I can't remember the trainer's name, uh, but he was Michael Jordan's coach, uh, Kobe Bryant's coach, Dwayne Wade's coach. When he first started training Michael Jordan, he already knew Michael Jordan was strong in one direction. So he's put him on the leg press machine, but he would never have him actually lift the, the machine up. He would only have him lower it down. So he would actually have people on the side, you know, Jordan, of course, you're going to have money, people spotting you so that you don't have to lift it up. And all you have to do is get strong in the opposite direction. That way it helps you get rid of all these little nagging injuries. And as far as longevity, that's what you want. You want to be you know, as well proportioned as possible. Uh, it's, it's not going to be that you're always going to be be well proportioned. You, you have to kind of like fix yourself. So now when I'm stretching, I could be like, oh, I feel my left hip is off or my right hip is off. And I got to, you know, do a little bit more work on that one to kind of loosen it up. But now I've, I'm, you know, becoming more in touch with like my body. Before everything I was doing, I was very blessed not to get injured because I know a lot of people get injured running. A lot of people get injured from like the knees. Uh, I just did an Instagram video the other day on how many people told me your knees are, are not going to make it aren't you worried about your knees and oh, you're not going to be able to walk when you get older. All those people are on the couch right now. They're the ones with mobility issues. I'm still going. If you are passionate about something, you'll find a way to keep going, uh, keep doing it, you know, and, and especially athletes. Some of us are the most stubborn. You, you know, you're injured and you're like, well, maybe I could still get these miles in. Or I had stitches. I, I did a show. Where I got some on jujitsu, uh, doing training jujitsu. And the doctor wanted me to do a year to two years off. I took like three months off. I ran three marathons in those three months. And at, I went and I bought goggles and I started training with goggles and then they would move. So then I, figured out a way to keep them on and then i finally didn't have to use them anymore so if you're passionate about something you, you'll find a way you know no matter what so hopefully uh this helped you to that you got something out of it as far as like hey maybe i'll go work out today or um, maybe i'll do some walking backwards or maybe i'll do something that i i normally didn't do or how about something you were passionate about that you haven't done in a long time that you know that you enjoy like i don't know say maybe you like just going to the park and shooting some hoops and you haven't done that in a long time just for no reason why don't you go out to the park and shoot some hoops get some some sun get some exercise get some walking and maybe go for a walk with your family member do do something active do something for yourself in the long run it's helping you uh so i hope uh you enjoyed the show my name is Coach Ray Z. This has been Athletic Definition live here on Fireside, episode 109. I will be back tomorrow, and tomorrow will be at 6 p.m. On Saturday, I'm having my one-year anniversary show here on Fireside, which will be at 1 p.m. Pacific time zone, and I hope you can join me. Uh, that Not really quite sure what I'm going to do on that show, but uh, anybody could come up and and talk about working out or sports oh yeah tomorrow yeah that's what the show's about 6 p.m it's going to be about just a variety of what's going on in sports uh but the things that you don't really see on espn and uh, it it'll be like a interesting little take so join me tomorrow uh, coach ray z enjoy the rest of the day and i appreciate everybody in the audience and your time thank you <laughs>